Hey guys, this is Matt with growhydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about humidity levels in your garden. So first we'll talk about what the different humidity the highs and lows will do to your plants and uh, some of the benefits of keeping those humidity levels in check. Um, if we get humidity levels too high in our garden, the plants will start to use large amounts of moisture from the air and they will not use their root mass to keep themselves hydrated. So they will end up going through a lot less nutrients and a lot less water from their root zone, which can you know, decrease yields, decrease growth rates and overall health of the plants. Um, also high humidity in flower, especially mid to late flower, is a big no-no because that's a higher risk of mold and rot, which we definitely don't want in our garden. Um, too low humidity can also play a huge impact uh, on your garden. If we get a really low humidity, the plants are going to start transpiring a lot more, which means they're going to start using a lot more of the water from their root mass because there's not much in the air. And that also is going to pull up a lot of unwanted nutrients with it. This can lead to unwanted nutrient burn. And if you've ever had a scenario where you were seeing tip burn or nutrient burn, but you were not feeding at an extra strong concentration or stronger than you fed before, check your humidity. If it's really low, is a good possibility that you know, your humidity levels are getting really low. Um, if we do find ourselves there, there's a couple ways to you know, change that. Obviously, if we're too low, you want to get some kind of humidifier in there. Uh, we want to monitor our exhaust. Maybe we don't need to be exhausting constantly, possibly cycling our exhaust to keep the humidity level, levels a little bit higher and also maybe venting our lights because those lights do burn a lot of humidity off. So if they're vented, that might help a little bit. If you're on the other side, if you're too low, um, I'm sorry, if you're too high, I apologize, uh, you're gonna wanna think about just a simple dehumidifier. Uh, also exhausting more regularly can help with dehumidification. Uh, it can only do so much though, so keep that in mind. Um, I also like to vent my dehumidifiers out of the room if you can, uh, just because they create a lot of heat. Um, and so keep that in mind as well. We sell you know, a couple different humidifiers and dehumidifiers on our website. Uh, the commercial ones seem to work the best for gardens. Um, we got some 40 pint and 60 pints on there. And then we also have, I think, one commercial humidifier that can get your room up to humidity pretty easily. Um, if you do need some of those devices, we're gonna need some way to control them. Um, the dehumidifiers usually have their own sensors. Humidifiers usually uh, kind of hit or miss. Um, the easiest way to just make sure you're right where you want to be is just to plug them into a nice controller. Um, the first one I have up here is the EOS-1. The EOS-1 uses basically these little fins on the side to monitor humidity in the space. So we need this controller to actually be in the garden planted at about plant height. That doesn't always work for everyone. We might need a little bit more precise measuring in a larger garden space because if this is too far in one corner, we're not really getting an accurate reading maybe in the middle of a large garden. So if you need a probe, then you can step up to something like the analog atmospheric controller. They do make digital versions of these as well that do a little bit more, but they're quite a bit more expensive. So this is a nice in-between cost-effective way to control temperature and humidity. You can plug your dehumidifier or humidifiers into this. There's a probe, a very nice probe sensor that hangs at plant height in the middle of the garden, and that's going to keep your humidifier or dehumidifier turning on and off to keep the whole garden where it needs to be. Um, this also allows you to plug in temperature, so you can plug in exhaust fans and things like that, and that will help cycle um, to keep your temperature where you need it to be, so an extra benefit with that for a really good price. Um, and we also need pretty simple ways just to constantly monitor humidity. Um, this is gonna help us keep where we keep it where we want it to be. So something as simple as this high growth thermometer, which has a little probe. Um, keep in mind the probe only measures temperature, so once again, this entire unit needs to stay in the garden to measure humidity. It's a common mistake with these guys. And then something really simple, really cost effective if you're just trying to do a bunch of spaces for cheap just to get a good idea where you're at. These little analog temperature humidity uh, thermometers are great and they just, they take no power. This has to have batteries. This is no power, just works on ambient space in the room. So keep that in mind for monitoring and for controlling. Um, when a general rule of thumb in veg or in cloning, we'll start with cloning. In early clone, uh, you're going to want a lot of humidity in your dome. They don't have any roots, so they need that high moisture to keep themselves, you know, hydrated. Basically, as those roots start to grow, we're going to want to decrease that humidity to get them back to ambient levels, so they're not shocked when they go into their veg space. So also keep that in mind. We need to wean them off of that high humidity over a period of a week or so. And when we get into veg, uh, until that veg plant is established, so in between transplants or until that plant that you've, you just potted has completely uh, filled up that 
root mass, we want to keep the humidity levels a little bit higher. They don't have the ability to pull as much water as they like because they have not filled that medium up yet so they can really benefit from more moisture in the room. Um, once that root mass is completely filled up or getting closer to filled up, you can drop it back down and you really don't see much of a change in growth rate. Uh, and then in flower, we definitely want to drop down into the 40s. So, you know, early clone, very high, early veg, probably in the 50s to 60s. Um, and then when we get into late veg, we're going to drop that down more, you know, 55 to 60. Um, and when we get into flower, we're going to want to drop that down into the 50s, even uh, high 40s. Late flower especially, we like to drop down into the 40s. It seems to help with oil and resin production, as well as a safeguard against uh, mold and rot. Uh, so keep in mind, humidity plays a huge role in your garden, how the plants grow, how fast they grow, the amount of water and nutrients they take up, um, the ability to protect them against mold and rot, just through keeping humidity in check is a really nice benefit. And the controllers to do it are not too pricey. Um, there's a lot more than this on our website to control your humidity, like I said before, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, more extensive controllers, and more monitors. So please check them out. I hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, just explain a little bit about what's going on in your garden, and uh, we'll check you next time.